Greetings, folks. It's Professor Fiore back once again to help you on your journey into electricity and electronics. If you want to converse with someone, if you want to have a conversation, you have to speak the language. And for us, that language is a language of math. And we need a convenient way to express very large and very small numbers. And to do that, we use something called scientific notation. And it's closely allied version engineering notation. And I will venture to say that you probably have some passing familiarity with this. Here's the first problem that we have. Let's consider a very large number. Okay, right off the bat, what is that? You have to think. Oh, those are thousands. Okay, it's 12 billion, 640 million. It's kind of inconvenient. What if you have a really tiny number? Now you're thinking, oh, geez, we're, you know, those are tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So that's like a millionth. That's like, oh, my brain hurts. We need a convenient way to do this, especially because we might wind up multiplying this number by this number or dividing or raising it to a power or something like that. So we want a nice compact way of doing this. The way scientific notation works is whether we have a really big number, really small number, we write it in sort of two parts. We have a precision part called the mantissa, and then we have a magnitude part that is the exponent. So things are written in terms of powers of 10. So what I would do with this first one is I would look at the first digit right there, okay? And I would simply count up the number of spaces that we have to get there. So you could either go this, this way or that way, okay? That becomes the power of 10. So, you know, at least in English we use commas for every uh, factor of a thousand. So, you know, that's 10 to the third, that would be 10 to the sixth, that would be 10 to the ninth. So at that point, that would be 10 to the 10th. So we would write this as 1.264, right? So these are our significant precision digits, 1.264. And then we just figure out, well, how many places do I have to go? Like I said, there's 3, 6, 9, 10. So that's times 10 raised to the 10th power. Now, do the same thing over here on this little guy. How many times do I have to go down to get my decimal point right there? All right? Well, I don't have little commas, so I'll just do it like this. Once, twice, three, four, five, six. Okay, I've got to do that six times. So that's 1.53. Now, because we're going down, that's raised to the negative sixth power, right? If we're getting bigger, it's positive. If we're going down, it's negative. So this is the way we would write it. A little shortcut for this, instead of saying times 10 to the, you would do this as you would on your calculator. You'd probably have an exponent button. So we just say E. E stands for times 10 raised to the. So I just say 1.264 E10. Here I would say 1.53 E minus 6. It's a much more compact way. You know, it's kind of obvious, at least hopefully, that you could sort of space out a zero or miscount the number of zeros that you have, trailing or leading. Um, you know, now who knows what you have, right? You know, being off by a factor of a 10 or a 100 
could be devastating. You know, what if you're calculating, uh, you know, a voltage for a, um, uh, a defibrillator and you're off by a factor of 10? Oh my, that could be bad. Okay, take a look at a couple more examples. You know, what if I have, um, you know, 3,600 or I have 0 0.159. Okay, so this one, come up one, two, three spaces. So this is 3.6 times 10 to the third, or E3. This one, we go one, two. So that's 1.59 E to the minus two, right? One, two. Okay. That's scientific notation. Engineering notation is just a slight variation on the theme. In engineering notation, the exponents are always factors of three. So in other words, the E could be plus three, plus six, plus nine, plus 12, minus three, minus six, minus nine, you know, and so on and so forth, right? We wouldn't see an E10 or and e minus two. In fact, this is already in engineering notation, as is this. So that's all I have to do is just make sure that the exponent is a multiple of three. So how would I alter, you know, this one and this one? Well, in this case, I would just have to go down to three, one, two, three. This is equivalent to. 15.9 e minus 3. Now, the precision part is 10 times bigger, so the exponent has to be 10 times smaller. Over here, same kind of thing. Right? This would be equivalent to 12.64 e9, right? Times 10 to the minus, is t times 10 to the ninth. Okay? All right, just getting started now. So, because, let's face it, people are lazy. Even though writing E is a nice shortcut compared to times 10 to the, we're going to go one further than that. We're going to make a bunch of um, sort of shortcuts. And these, some of these anyway, you've undoubtedly already heard of. So let's start over here. Kilo indicated with a lowercase k, is 10 to the plus 3. Working our way up. Mega, like megabytes, capital M, plus 6. Giga, capital G, plus 9. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Giga, isn't that giga? Well, lots of people pronounce that giga. Most people in the U.S. pronounce that with a hard G. It, however, comes from a, a Greek root that's the same as giant. So properly, it is a J. And if you actually bother to look this up on the NIST standards, it says to pronounce it with a J. Uh, of course, if you say that to most people, they'll look at you a little strangely. Right? But that is, in fact, the proper way of pronouncing it. But, you know, let's not get hung up on that. And then coming up, we have Terra. Capital T is plus 12. So it's not uncommon today to find, uh, you know, terabyte uh, USB drives, for example. Okay, so that's 10 to the 12th. Basically, a million million bytes. So a million mega is a Terra. All right, a thousand mega is a giga. And then a million mega or a mega mega is a Terra. Working our way down, milli, little m, times 10 to the minus 3. Micro, okay, we've already used the upper and lowercase m, so we use the Greek letter mu for that. Kind of looks like a u. That's minus 6. Nano, little n. These are all, down here, these are all lowercase. Minus 9, pico. Minus 12. These go in both directions. You know, if you kept on going, you'd have femto and addo and so on and so forth. 
But for most of what we do, this, this will cover it. This is the kind of thing you need to memorize. You don't have to stop and think about this. This, this should be as natural to you as saying your ABCs. Okay, like I said, some of these you probably already know. Kilo, mega, giga, tera. Working down, maybe not so much. Uh, it's almost, not quite, it's almost alphabetical. I think the million micro are backwards, but then nano pico, nano nine, nano nine. You could just think of this as like a little single word, milli micro nano pico. Just keep saying it over and over, and over again. Milli micro nano pico, milli micro nano pico, milli micro nano pico. Kind of like when you were doing the ABCs, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And then you got to that cluster, L, M, N, O, P. Okay, so same kind of thing, milli micro nano pico. Okay, so we will talk about, you know, a voltage, for example, that might be in millivolts or kilovolts, a current that's in milliamps or microamps or nanoamps or something like that, resistor values that are in ohms or kilo ohms or mega ohms. So we don't even bother with the, you know, E9, like in this case, right? We would just say this is 12.64 giga, whatever, you know, bytes. I don't know, whatever you're looking at. Um, down here, 15.9 E minus 3. So we would just say that's 15.9 milli, you know, maybe it's milliamps or millivolts. So I just use a single letter there instead of e to the minus three or e to the you know plus nine or whatever the heck it is so that's just a further sort of simplification and after a while you kind of remember little shortcuts for example after a while you will remember that milli times mega will get you kilo Okay, that's 10 to the minus third, that's 10 to the sixth, and that's 10 to the third, right? Minus three, plus six, and three. Which leads us into the mathematical manipulations. If you're going to add or subtract, first, step one, make sure the exponents are the same. Then step two, add or subtract as required. The precision part, the mantissa. So if I had um, you know, 12 milli and I wanted to add 6 milli, since they're already millis, it's just 18 milli. Now if I had something like maybe, let's say half a volt, and I wanted to add to that 100 millivolts. These are not in the same power, right? Because this is 10 to the zero volts. It's a base unit. This is millivolts. So I either turn this thing into volts or I turn this thing into millivolts. Well, the 0.5, just like we did over here, right? If you went down, brink, brink, so you could imagine zeros over here, right? So one, two, three, this is 500 milli, in this case, volts. So I'd have to do that conversion. So we'd say, all right, that's 500 millivolts plus 100 millivolts. That's 600 millivolts. All right, so you have to make sure that the uh, exponent part are the same. Add millis to millis, megs to megs, and so on and so forth. Uh, so if you have a value you know, that's like wildly different. This is actually kind of convenient. So, um, you know, let's use an example like this. Maybe you're talking about um, memory on a computer. So you say, well, I have, um, you know, 500 gigabytes of available space. And I'm going to add one file so that subtracts off, you know, it's a little text file or something, and it's 100k bytes. You know, you look at this and you go, geez, giga versus k's, that's 10 to the ninth versus 10 to the third. I mean, that's a million times smaller. I can just about ignore that and say, well, that's just about 500 gigabytes, right? 
It's like, why bother? It's tiny. It's like saying, well, you know, um, I just won a thousand dollars and, uh, oh, I got to spend 50 cents on a pack of gum. So, oh, that's really going to impact the thousand dollars that I have. Okay. So that's kind of convenient. So again, add, subtract. Now, when it comes to multiply, divide, what you do, step one, is you multiply or divide as needed the mantissa part. And then you add if you're multiplying or subtract if you're dividing the exponent part. So you don't have to make sure that they're the same size, right? You don't have to make sure that they're in the same, like kilos to kilos, millis to millis. You can just run this straight up. So if you had um, like 2e3 and you want to multiply that by you know, 6e minus 6, you would say, well, it's 2 times 6, right? That's 12. Since I'm multiplying, then I'm going to add the exponents, so it's 3 plus a negative 6, so that's e minus 3. Or, as I said, you would say that's 2k something times 6 micro something. Um, as you'll see, eventually, this could be something like a 2k ohm resistor and a 6 microamp current. K's times micros, just like I was saying before, you know, eventually you sort of learn these things. That's going to get you millis. So it's going to be 12 milli, whatever. In this case, if that was ohms and that was amps, this would be 12 millivolts. But that's the way it works. So if I was going to divide, if I said it was 2 divided by 6, E minus 6, then it would be 2 over 6, right, one third, and then it would be E3 minus a minus 6. Okay, so that's going to give you E9. Um, in other words, you got jiggas out of that thing. Okay? All right. So this you just have to become very fluent in. You just have to practice this, practice this, practice this, practice this. And then when you're done, you have to practice this, practice this, practice this, and practice this. Okay? So as I said, some of these you might already be familiar with, um, but... You need to commit this whole thing to memory. There are more. But for most of what we're going to do, this will work fine. Now, this works in perfectly with the metric system. And, of course, in electricity and electronics, that's all we do. System International, the SI system, right? So a unit like a volt is actually a metric unit. Everything we do. So... If we were talking about length, you know, you talk about a meter. If it's a really small thing, you could be talking about a millimeter. So what is that? So a millimeter is 10 to the minus third. It's one thousandth of a meter. So a meter is a little bit more than a yard. It's 39.37 uh, inches, basically. So now you're saying it's one one thousandth of that. All right, so, you know, millimeter is probably less thick than this line, okay? On the other hand, if we were going to get something big, we could use kilo. All right, so it's 10 to the third. That's thousands of meters. This is kilometer. Don't pronounce it kilometer. Lots of people pronounce it kilometer. It's a kilometer. Ometers are generally measurement devices. Speedometer, tachometer, thermometer. What the heck is this? Well, if you pronounce it micrometer, that's a measurement device, right, for measuring very small distances. If you're talking about a really small distance, it's a micrometer, right? So again, lots of people say, you know, kilometer, I guess properly that would be measuring kills, whatever the heck that is. So it's really a kilometer, but it's just like Jiga, you know, don't get too hung up on that. Like, you know, people are going to be 
you know, what kind of a word fascist are you? Um, but that is the proper pronunciation. Okay. The nice thing here is we only have one unit. We have a meter. Unlike in customary U.S. units, you have all kinds of different units. You know, you have miles if it's far. If it's human-sized, you know, we have feet or maybe inches. But we also have yards. Okay, we have furlongs. There's lots of weird things that we have. And of course, the really weird, weird, weird thing is none of these are nice factors. You know, inches? Well, you got 12 inches to make a foot. But you got 5,280 feet to make a mile. Now, there's historical reasons for that, but it's, let's be honest, it's a pain in the butt. You know, how many inches are in six miles? You got to get your calculator out if you want any kind of accuracy. Whereas over here, using this, it's just a matter of moving over the decimal point. Life is easy. Life is a piece of cake. Okay. And we don't do any of the crazy business about, uh, you know, I need 330 seconds of something. You know, none of that. It's just a nice, simple decimal value. Move the decimal point around if you need to scale it. We're good. We're done. Okay. So here's a little fun fact for you. The United States has roughly 4.2% of the global population. All right, there's 7 odd billion people in the world right now. Um, out of that, some 330 or so million people use the customary units like inches and gallons and miles and so forth. That is the population of the U.S. Basically everybody else uses the metric system. And of course, if you work for a company, if you have your own company, you want to sell things globally, you are going to have to deal with the metric system. It's very short-sighted to say, you know, we're, we're going to use this, we're going to keep using miles and feet and three-sixteenths of an inch Okay, no, that's sort of backward thinking. Right? This is much easier. This metric system using this is much easier. So thankfully, what we're going to be doing in electricity and electronics, it's really all metric. It uses all of this power of 10. Oh, it's a beautiful thing.